Hello, this is Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic Cowan. It's great to be with you today, Paul. How are you doing? Uh, welcome back, Natasha. I haven't seen you for quite a while. I know we've been busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things have been happening. Yeah. Like, like, like we've been exploring cave people. Exploring what? <laughs> cave people. <laughs> You've got a caveman in a boardroom. How did you find him? Well, he's the one that won't change. So oh. everybody knows, everybody knows that they want that they need to change. Everybody in the pharmaceutical industry knows that the regulations are changing. But you, for some reason, you always get somebody in the boardroom who doesn't want to change. Well, you know, it's a cold day, and he knows that the heat needs to go up, so he built a fire rather than turn on the thermostat. Yeah, he didn't know about the thermostat. He did his fire in the middle of the room. <laughs> <laughs> then... Of your pictures. And, you know, it's a great metaphor for folks who just keep doing the same thing. Um, sometimes because they're so used to it. Sometimes because they don't know better. Sometimes because they're afraid to try something new and fail. Um, and sometimes because they're hearing contradictory messages. So it's better to not do anything until everyone else has figured it out so you don't get yelled at. <laughs> well, that's a good point, actually, because there is a significant element of well, I'm getting told to do five different ways. So I'm going to wait till somebody decides which one I've got to take rather than, as my boss is telling me, to try one of them and then fix it if it don't work. Yeah. I, I mean, look how many times people try stuff. They waste time. They waste energy. They waste life. Um, I've been um, doing interviews actually right now for uh, an organization where we're trying to put together their culture. So we're doing the assessments, I'm doing the stakeholder interviews. And I was talking to an employee who was saying exactly that, where he'd spent you know, two, three months working on a project, putting his effort in, um, doing overtime, just to find that the whole thing was canceled. It's like, you know what? I'm not gonna do things and you guys are just gonna change your mind and cancel it and erase all my work. Uh -huh. So, you know, that communication piece, getting clear on what needs to happen, getting people on board, um, getting the apathy out of the way, getting the multiple changes that didn't work mm -hmm. and the memory of that out of the way. There's so many things that are holding back um, that clear progress to a goal. I think, um, I think it's, a lot of the time it's fear as well. Yeah. I think they're scared of doing it wrong. Yeah. There's a very strong um, ethos of, well, that didn't work, get rid of the person, put somebody else in the place and they'll fix it instead. Rather than and, that. Yeah, that's not, I think I've mentioned this before. You can have a brand new person who's a top performer at another organization come in to your organization and within six months they will match the culture because people um, flex to the culture that's there and if the system and the culture and the messages are reinforcing one set of behaviors that person who had a whole different set of behaviors in that other organization is going to have the ones that are problematic because you haven't fixed the problems in this one. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I often see it's quite a, it's either a blame culture or a bullying culture. Mm. So um, when you're saying, when you're seeing blame and bullying, you know, what are, what are some of the behaviors you see? Because the blamers and the bulliers don't see themselves as doing that. You find that? Um, sometimes, but more often than not, they know they're doing it on purpose. Because they're trying to get results and they think that's the only way they can do it. No, they're trying to keep the job and, and not get into trouble. Mm. The blame side, mm. the bullying side, it's just people that enjoy it. Well, and then I, we're hearing the wrong people. <laughs> well, yeah, but at certain times, it's the people that are 
if that's the culture of the business to, to bully down the line, then that's what happens. If it starts at the top, it often perpetuates all the way down to the bottom. Um, yeah. And you bully the team and you bully the next one up and you bully all the way down to the bottom. Um, because that's what the head of site or CEO or whatever is doing. They're bullying you into doing what you want, what they what they want you to achieve. Yeah. Pass it on. Yeah, I remember a cartoon where the boss kicks the um, the employee. The employee goes home and he kicks the wife. The wife kicks the kid. The kid kicks the dog. The dog kicks the cat. <laughs> I think the cat kicks the mouse. I don't know if it kept going, but <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, like that behavior is shared. Behavior is modeled. And behavior is what most people define the culture to be. And I define behavior as at the surface level that is the most easy to change. So does that mean really this picture should have caveman in every seat? Probably. <laughs> Nobody's willing to change because the one at the front's got the big club and they're going to bash everybody in your head if they don't do as they're told. Yep. Yeah, I think the caveman was hired for his club. <laughs> that would actually make more sense than the one we've got on the screen because it's the one we're thinking about there is that some person, one person is resisting change. Right. Whereas in actual fact, the, the scenario we've just discussed is more to do with everybody being stuck in a certain position and unable to change because of the overall culture, not one individual's culture. So that really means they're all cavemen. And they're well, all stuck in the current status quo and can't move on. I like to say that we perpetually are stuck in the mind, body, and thinking that we have, and we have to thoughtfully and intentionally move that forward. Hmm. I think that's an interesting concept that we need to discuss in our next recording. We will discuss it in our next one. <laughs> okay, Natasha, that's Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic-Allen signing out. Talk to you soon, everybody.